All right, guys, welcome to the video. Uh, today, we are going to be addressing a question I get all the time, which is what length arrow should I be shooting? Um, so I'm gonna kind of cover my preferences for like a, a length of a hunting arrow, and then what you can do with the target arrow. So starting off with a hunting arrow, um, generally it's going to be determined by your draw length. So on a hunting bow, um, I personally don't like an arrow that, that when I get to full draw, it's way inside the shelf of the bow or you know the, the front of the riser, um, especially if you're shooting a fixed blade broadhead. Now, the reason for that is because if I have a real high profile head on, especially on older bows that don't have a real wide uh, sight window and shelf, like Matthews, the older Matthews, like the Q2 and like the Chill, uh, if I draw back and even if my rest doesn't fail, if one of my blades is oriented to where it catches, just barely even nicks the riser as it passes the front of that shelf, it's gonna pull my knock off the string. So now I'm gonna be at full draw uh, you know, on an animal and I got an arrow flopping around that's not on the string. When I go to let down, maybe it gets caught up in my cables and now my broadhead's flopping around and it's, it's unsafe. It could, you know, who knows what could happen. It could cut your bowstring, but I don't want any chance of that broadhead catching the shelf as it goes by and pulling my knock off the string. Uh, the second thing that I, that I like to cut them about a half inch in front of the riser um, is because if, if I, you know, especially if you're kind of a newer shooter and the heat of the moment, you just yard that bow back and your grip is not set right. If I have a finger up and it's in front of a, if, you know, some of those broadheads are pretty high profile, like the big four blade, like Grim Reaper, um, even if it's a mechanical, you know, if I have a finger that's up and that broadhead goes flying by it, I'm not gonna have a finger after that arrow is gone. Um, so for hunting setups, generally speaking, like on a Hoyt, if you have a 28 inch draw length, a 28 and a half or 28 and three quarter inch cut is gonna put that arrow anywhere from, you know, a quarter to a half inch in front of the shelf. Uh, same with Matthews. Like if I have a 29 inch draw on the new Matthews, you know, if I cut it 29 and three quarters, that's gonna put it a half inch in front of the shelf. So, you know, there's a lot of tools out there. Like we use this, uh, no, where the heck is it? Of course, I can't find it. I'm back. <laughs> we use this arrow here. Um, it actually just has a bunch of little numbers on it. So it's basically a ruler and you can put the bow in the drawboard, draw back and see exactly where you know, a half inch is gonna be in front of the riser or a quarter inch. Now, I know there's a lot of people that shoot with an arrow that comes inside the shelf. That is okay, um, especially if you're shooting like a mechanical where you don't have blades that are gonna catch on the shelf. Um, but that's just a general rule of thumb. I like to cut them either definitely even or just a quarter or half inch in front of the riser. Um, now, target arrows are a totally different animal because I'm not worried about you know, I'm never gonna have a broadhead on my target arrow. So, uh, actually I actually have my two arrows here. So this is my hunting arrow. Um, this is a, you know, carbon injection from Easton. I have it cut at, so I have a 30 inch draw on my traverse. I have it cut at 29 and three quarters. And then these inserts are uh, 15 sixteenths of an inch long. So it's, it's sitting, you know, well in front of my finger. Um, with these 280s, you know, that length, that cut length seems to work really well. Um, and you know, I'm pulling 75 pounds, so I need I need a pretty stiff arrow, which is why I went with the 280s. Um, but in in contrast to that, this is my outdoor target arrow, same draw length on my target bow, um, but this arrow is cut at like 27 and a quarter inches. And I'm not kidding, like when I'm at full draw, it literally comes to like right here. My rest is like right here. <laughs> um, the reason for that is because you know, the, the spine of your arrow can be determined, or the length of your arrow will determine the amount of flex in it. So like when you look on uh, Easton's spine chart, you know, it'll ask you what draw weight you're shooting and then what length of arrow you're wanting to shoot. And then it will give you a spine for those two things. So when I looked at it, you know, a, a 340, if I was to cut it, let's just say even with the front of my riser or cut it at like 29 inches, a 340 actually would have been the correct spine. But what I wanted to do, I built these pretty much specifically for outdoor. 
um, in kind of windier conditions, you know, like field and, and USA archery stuff. I wanted an arrow that was gonna get there quick and with small diameter and got off the bow really fast. And you know, the reason for that is when it's really windy like that, the less time that arrow has to spend in the air, the, the better off I am, the less it's gonna drift with the wind. So what I did was thought, okay, well, you know, what if I cut an arrow at, at 28 inches? And it said, well then, you know, on the spine selector chart, it said, well then you could probably go with like a 380 spine, which is, you know, a little bit weaker spine. So originally I got them, I cut them at 28 and a half to start and kind of tested them. And they were a little bit weak there. You know, I put 120 grains up front. Most of the spine is done with 100 grains. So I had to account for that. Um, and I just started cutting them. You know, I pulled points out, cut them down a little bit, test them again. And I ended up getting to the point, thankfully they ended up shooting really well because I only have about maybe a quarter of an inch to spare before I actually cross onto the point here when I'm at full draw. But because this arrow is shorter, even though it's a weaker spine, because it's shorter, it still has the right amount of flex. I saved a little bit of weight, thus increased my speed, and it groups really well for me. So for target arrows, you can really play around with the length and point weight, and obviously, you're probably not ever gonna go way past the end. You know, if you have an arrow that's way too stiff, and you have to cut it three inches too long, or three inches longer, or four inches longer than your riser, um, you know, you, you just have the wrong spine. You need to go down a spine and then you can actually cut it to an acceptable length. But usually it's gonna be front of the riser to middle of the middle of the shelf somewhere um, for target arrows. And you can kind of play around with, you know, like I did where it's like, okay, it says I should shoot a 340. That'd be if I cut it, you know, at, at 29 inches, but I want a little more speed. So what if I shot a 27 and a half inch arrow? What spine would I need then? And it will tell you. Now I wanna put a disclaimer out there, the spine charts, are a good starting point they're not always perfect like i was getting pretty nervous with this it said it would be really it said it would be perfect at about 28 28 and a half inches and it it was still weak coming out of my trx 36 which is a fairly aggressive cam so that was probably dumb on me i actually just ordered more of these and i just ordered the 340s and i'll probably shoot them at like 20 and a half 29 inches the weight difference is is nominal and i mean it's you know like 15 grains in the arrow, so I'm not losing a bunch of speed and I don't have to worry about being underspined with them at all. Um, so, you know, it's a good starting point to look at the spine charts there, but then you can play around with arrow length. So, like I said, your draw weight and the length of arrow that you want to shoot is going to determine the spine you need. And then um, for hunting arrows, like I said, I don't like to cut them much past the front of my riser. So, you know, put it on draw board, measure it, say, okay, I need a 29 inch arrow you can look on on Easton spine chart it'll tell you okay at 29 inches and 65 pounds you need you know whatever spine it is um, so just thought I'd answer that I get a lot of questions on what length should I cut my arrows and my first question back is always you know how long is your draw length and what's your poundage because that's at least going to give me a starting point to start giving people some recommendations. So hope that clears some things up for you guys. If you have any more questions, as usual, hit me up below. Um, getting a lot of questions these days. I'm trying to get back to you in a timely manner. Sometimes it takes me a little longer than I would like, but I do appreciate everything. Uh, so until next time, guys, keep them in the middle. Remember, precision is a decision, and I'll see you on the range.